Ever since I got serious about this channel back in 2020 during the pandemic, I have been recommending the budget-friendly Sony STR-DH790 as the perfect entry-level 7.2 channel AVR to get into Dolby Atmos and DTSX. And even then, it was a couple years old since it was actually released in 2018. Sony had done nothing in regards to their AVR since then, but Sony is back and they have a few game-changing features. So let's talk about it. On February 1st, 2023, Sony finally unveiled four new AVRs in their ES series, ES standing for extra special. <laughs> Just kidding. It really means excellent stuff. Oof, got you again. For reals this time, ES actually stands for Elevated Standard, so this is a more premium line of AVRs compared to their baseline models. We have the AZ-1000ES, AZ-3000ES, AZ-5000ES, and I bet you can guess the final version from this pattern. You got it, the AZ-7000ES is their flagship AVR. Let's start with what they all have in common. Given that this is Sony, it makes sense that these all support HDMI 2.1, 4K120 and 8K60 video signals, auto low latency, and variable refresh rate for a premium next-gen gaming experience if you happen to have a PS5. They all come with 360 spatial sound mapping technology, which is the same technology that made the HTA9 so popular. Being able to map out a balanced and immersive sound field even if your speakers aren't perfectly positioned. But on top of that, it also has its own proprietary digital cinema calibration 9 to work in conjunction with 360 spatial sound mapping. They also support Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, and 360 Reality Audio. They also support Sony's Acoustic Center Sync, if you have a compatible Sony TV, like the X95K for example, utilizing both your center channel speaker and TV speakers to work in tandem to improve dialogue clarity. As far as video, they all support HDR10, Dolby Vision, HLG, and IMAX Enhanced HDR formats. They all support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well as music streaming via Wi-Fi, like with Chromecast built-in, Apple AirPlay, and Spotify Connect. They also work with Sonos devices and support high-res audio formats. They all support up to three zones, RS-232C connections like with a Control 4 smart home system, and can be controlled with a smartphone with the Sony Music Center app. But here's one thing that is a game changer for sure. They all support Sony's own RS3S and RS5 wireless surrounds, as well as their SW3 and SW5 wireless subwoofers. <gasps> Although I asked my buddy Shane Lee how many wireless components it supports since he got his hands on the flagship 7000 ES, and he said he could only get one pair of surrounds and one wireless subwoofer to work. Huh. They may add support for more in the future with a firmware update, but for now, one pair of wireless speakers and one wireless sub is the limit. But for those of you who have wanted for years to have a hybrid, wired, and wireless home theater system, your time has finally come. True, you still have to plug wireless speakers into a power outlet normally, but you don't have to worry about speaker wires going from your AVR all the way behind your listening position. And to add the flexibility of wireless subwoofer placement is such a cool option to have in case you have furniture in weird places, etc. Now let's talk about the differences. Starting with the AZ-1000ES, the new models are 7.2 channel, 9.2, 11.2, and 13.2 channel with power ratings of 100 watts, 120 watts, 130 watts, and 150 watts. But as we can see in the fine print here at the bottom, those are power ratings into an 8 ohm load at 2 channels driven at only 1 kilohertz. Huh. So when all channels are engaged, you're obviously going to get less watts per channel. One thing I'm confused about is this here where it says pre-outs. According to this comparison chart, each AVR has a full set of pre-outs, but when you look at the official photos of each AVR, the 1000ES and 3000ES don't have a full set of pre-outs. So we have some contradictions here that might come to light when they are officially launched. Because if indeed they all have a full set of pre-outs, including the baseline 1000ES, that would be incredible news since right now the only 7.2 channel AVRs with a full set of pre-outs are the Marantz Cinema 70S and Cinema 60. Again, only time will tell. 
Yes, they all support 4K 120 and 8K 60 video signals, but the 1000ES only has two HDMI inputs that support up to 8K, while the other three models have four 8K supported HDMI inputs. The 5000ES and 7000ES have another cool center channel feature called dual center speaker, where you can have two center channel speakers located above and below your display working in tandem to make it sound like dialogue is coming right out of your screen, like a movie theater. And one last center channel feature to mention is what Sony calls center lift. If you have two height channels in your system located above your TV, they will work in tandem with your center channel speaker to lift your dialogue to once again make it sound like it's coming directly out of your TV. I'm curious how that actually sounds. Are you curious? I'm curious. And that about wraps up your basic differences without going into too much detail. But there's one thing I wanna discuss in the flagship 7000 ES that this comparison chart doesn't talk about. After I watched Shane Lee's review, which I highly recommend you watch after this video, I noticed something that is incredibly unique when dealing with front wides. This is only possible with the 7000 ES, however, since it's the only AVR in this new lineup that supports front wides. But up until now, if you wanted to incorporate front wides, say with a Denon AVR, you could only have them if you already had seven ear level speakers. But as you can see in Shane's video, there are so many options that incorporate front wides, starting with 6.0, 6.1, 7.0, 7.1, 8.0, 8.1, 9.0, and 9.1. So let's say if you have your couch against the back wall and can't do surround backs, for example, you could still choose 7.1 with front wides if you wanted the front half of your soundstage to be more immersive and prominent. Pretty cool. And one last feature is speaker relocation, which simulates ideal speaker placement even if your speakers aren't in precisely ideal locations. So regardless of where your speakers are, this feature will create a phantom soundstage to simulate as if the speakers were placed at virtually identical angles from the listening position. There are two types to choose from, type B, which is ideal for live music, or type A for movie content. This basically eliminates the need for exact measurements between the speakers and your main listening position. Pretty wild. At the time of this recording, at least according to Crutchfield's website, the prices for these AVRs are $1099 for the 1000ES, $1699 for the 3000ES, $2099 for the 5000ES, and $3299 for the 7000ES. But this is exciting news that Sony has finally put their skin in the game once again when it comes to a real contender for quality AVRs that have all the latest next-gen gaming and future-proofing features that you'd expect in 2023. Everyone focuses on Denon, Marantz, Ankyo, Yamaha, Emotiva, etc. So I'm glad that there's another option for all of you out there. Sony is raising the bar with some unique features found only in their AVRs. So I hope this makes other manufacturers take notice and think outside of the box for future advancements in home audio. Hooray. Thank you for watching this feature breakdown video of the new line of Sony ES AVRs. Are you as excited as I am about this new lineup? Are you now considering one of these instead of one you had been eyeing all this time? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies on your new Sony ES AVR, experience them. And of course, always be listening. So this basically eliminates the need for exact measurements between the speakers and your main mini mini mini. Main ninny with judging.